The JSC has agreed to the listing of Sabania Gold in the gold mining sector off the main board of the JSC today. And joining us for more insight on this is Neil Froneman. He's CEO of Sabania Gold. Well, Neil, a very exciting day, but I'm sure also uh, one that's filled with apprehension. Of course, uh, the market's looking to see, uh, you know, the kind of reaction we get from the investment community to this listing. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling uh, quite nervous, um, <clears throat> but at the same time very excited. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of hard work. Um, these assets um, are going to be high yield assets, and as we know, investors all around the world are looking for yield. Um, the fact that uh, they are South African based, and this is going to be a proudly South African company, is a, is a huge test for all of us South Africans. Neil, uh, people have said that uh, it's a vote of no confidence by Goldfields to do this, but it's not as simple as that. It's not as if uh, the bad mines have been hived off. As you say, there is some high yield here. Uh, if it's a dog, perhaps it's uh, quite a well-bred dog, uh, if not uh, perhaps a, a perfect pedigree. Um, David, absolutely. Um, these are not um, um, old um, assets that have been capital starved. It was certainly not uh, Goldfield's intention um, as, a, as a, a sign of no confidence in South Africa. This was a very well thought out corporate plan to separate similar types of assets from um, other different types of assets. And um, the, these, these are mature gold mines, high quality, and uh, will generate very significant uh, free cash. So. Uh, um, you know, I, I really look at the quality and the yield that uh, is possible from them. So let's drill down into the managing of these assets, Neil, specifically, because the key question is uh, how you're planning to keep costs down where you have, uh, as I was saying at the top of the show, 50% of your costs coming through from labor and then high energy costs to contend with as well. Um, it, it's a huge challenge and it's our primary focus. Um, uh, labor costs are high. Um, I'm looking at various ways of dealing with that. Um, we have to become more effective with the labor that we've got. Um, we need to restructure our business uh, at, a, at a very senior level. There's, there's obviously um, lots of benefits that flow from the unbundling for Sabanya. Um, the corporate overhead is, is reduced. Um, we merge regional and corporate structures. And, um, and that'll all have a benefit for costs. Obviously, electricity is becoming a very big part of our cost structure. We've made submis submissions to NURSA where we've objected strongly against the, uh, the continued ESKIM price increase. Uh, we think it's most inappropriate, uh, the basis that uh, they've used to, to increase costs. Um, and I clearly put job losses at Eskom's feet should they continue with uh, such a, a pricing strategy. Neil, it's in the aftermath of the mining in Darba, as we said earlier. Now, that's coincidence, but a lot of things were said at the mining in Darba. And our view here was that uh, shift of tone. Uh, Mark Kutifani, for example, the incoming head of uh, Anglo-American and formerly of uh, anglo Gold Ashanti, saying involvement with communities is part of what we do. And certainly a lot of the chief executives talking about much more sensitivity to government, to the environment, to the uh, communities around the mines. This puts you in a bit of a tough position because you're just you're starting a new company, but it's almost as if the goalposts have shifted a little for you. David, um, we, we are very fortunate that we start essentially with a clean sheet. Now, I think the, the first thing is that uh, um, pre Morikana, the mines have done a lot of good work. They clearly haven't done enough, and um, and and we are committed to to doing a lot more. Um, the name Sabanya, uh, for those that don't m know it, uh, means we are one. It is clearly a name that is intended to demonstrate our focus on employees and pulling everyone together by working in different ways. Um, I think fundamentally though, if we don't have a strong commercial underpin to our business, there's no social upliftment for anybody. So our primary focus is to get our business working properly. Uh, at a low cost and efficiently. A lot of that then throws the attention on mechanization, specifically, Neil, where you're going to have to go deeper. I mean, you're already mining at uh, depths of, what, four kilo kilometers. I mean, what's your plan at this stage of the game with regards to mechanization? Because then that would mean a very fine balancing act in terms of managing the labor side of things and then, uh, you know, managing a profitable business at the end of the day. 
Um, you know, if, if mechanization was uh, the panacea that uh, it may be in the future, it's certainly not the panacea that uh, I think we're looking for now. Um, our productivity has halved, um, and, and people are working as hard as they always have worked. Um, the real issues are um, being mature assets, people are working far from uh, the, the shafts, there's a large amount of working time. I believe we can make big improvements in productivity and hence our cost base by just doing things smarter. So um, this, this should not be seen as a, a threat to, to the number of people we employ. If we do the right things, we work together, I still think there's five to ten years of, um, of, of, of decent employment levels and, and post that there could be opportunities for mechanization. We're working in a, in a tabular, narrow reef uh, environment. Very, very difficult to introduce mechanization in those areas. Neil, they say gold is a sunset industry, and it has, of course, been declining in terms of uh, our production since 1970. We all know that. Is this uh, a kind of going to be a new spurt? Uh, and in the context of a mining industry in South Africa, that's certainly under pressure from all sorts of angles. Um, <clears throat> Again, David, the, uh, the reductions in output are, are well known and, and you're absolutely right. In my mind, um, if you're talking sunset in 20 or 30 years time, um, I think that that's fine. But certainly in the next uh, 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years, there's very significant resources uh, in our existing mines that can be mined. Um, there are very significant resources that are at medium depth and, um, and require some enhancements in, in minimizing dilution. Clearly there's still lots of resources that are deep and, and other mining companies are focusing on that. So this really doesn't have to be a sunset industry if all stakeholders get their act together and work together.